An Escondido High School teacher accused of having sex with at least two students faced a judge for the first time today. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. And I'm Kirsten Holmes in tonight for Marcella Lee. We first told you about the arrest of Kyrie Tisdell yesterday. CBS 8's Brian White joins us live from Vista with more on Tisdell's first court appearance today. Brian, what did we learn? Well, prosecutors say charges filed against Mr. Tisdale involved two different victims, a male and a female, both underage students at Escondido High at the time of these alleged crimes. Enter pleas of not guilty and deny any and all allegations. Kyrie Kashif Tisdale pleading not guilty to 26 felony counts of unlawful sexual contact with two minors. You understand, sir? Yes. He was arrested Friday at Escondido High School as he and other teachers were getting their classrooms ready for the new school year. The same day, Escondido police served a search warrant at his home here at Riverwalk Apartments where they seized his computer. It's obviously incredibly important to protect the most vulnerable victims in our society, and that includes children. According to a statement from the Escondido Union School District Superintendent John Peterson, the 31-year-old math teacher who had been hired in 2019 has been placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of the case. Tisdale's bail remains at a quarter million dollars. In the event he is released, Judge Francisco Sanchez issued a protective order. It requires that he have no contact with either victim, regardless of whether he's in custody or out of custody. He's not allowed within 100 yards of their home or their school or their workplace if they have one. No social media contacts, texting, direct messaging, nothing. According to the criminal complaint, these alleged crimes occurred between June 2022 and May 2023. Police believe there may be other victims out there. That's why Deputy District Attorney Peter Estes is urging anyone who may have been a victim to call Escondido Police. They are ready and willing to take your call, and we will have resources available for anyone who has suffered anything as a result of this or any other crime of a similar nature. I know it's a difficult thing for victims to come forward, but when they do, as you saw here today, it can be a very empowering thing to hold these people responsible. Kyrie Tisdale faces nearly 20 years in prison if convicted on all charges, and he's due back in court next week. Reporting live at the Vista Courthouse, Brian White, CBS 8. Thanks, Brian. A plan to build 3,000 homes in the northern part of Santee will not be going forward, at least not for now, after a judge ruled the Finita Ranch project can't move forward again. Environmental groups that sued to stop the project say the area developers want to build in is a high wildfire risk zone that has burned 65 times in the past 100 years. The Center for Biological Diversity says the city failed to get voter approval, which is required by law when it comes to projects this size, and the judge agreed. Right now, it's not clear if the city will appeal. CBS 8 is working for you after neighbors in Rancho Penasquitas alerted us to water flowing off Black Mountain. Uh, the source of the flooding is a bit of a mystery right now, but as CBS 8's David Gopperson reports, the water is being pumped out of backyards and into the street. This water follows in the backyard of Ron White's home on Westcott Court in Rancho Penasquitas, just below Black Mountain. It's been flowing for more than a year. We thought the big rains happened, and by this time last year, August, we thought we'd go away, and it did not. To keep his house from flooding, Ron resorted to digging trenches across his backyard and pumping the water out to the street. It flows along the curb, into a storm drain, and also collects in a nearby canyon. And Ron is not alone. You can hear the neighbor. They're doing more trenching over there. The two neighbors on either side of Ron don't want to speak on camera, but their backyards are flooding too. They dug holes and installed pumps. I've got right now seven pumps running. After the neighbors complained, the city did an investigation and claimed the water was coming from a natural source. The excess water is not due to a leak or failing city infrastructure. The city doesn't plan to take any further action, the city said via email. The city investigation did mention a water main break in January along Meadow Run Street. Neighbors tell me that huge water main pumps water uphill to the Black Mountain water tank and a nearby cement water reservoir 
owned by the city of San Diego. We've got to come up with some answers for the residents. Kate Glenn is the president of the Rancho Penasquitos Town Council. She says the source of the water remains a mystery. So my message to the city of San Diego, let's not play ping pong anymore. Let's come to the table, work this out, and create a solution for the residents in Rancho Penasquitos. So as it stands now, the county of San Diego may do some additional water leak testing, but the city of San Diego says it's not their problem. In Rancho Penasquitos, David Gottfordson, CBS 8. Thank you, David. All right, so construction is making its way through Claremont, specifically on Claremont Drive, but have you noticed how bumpy and uneven the road is? even after the work is done. The CBS 8's Alex lies live on Claremont Drive near the Claremont Village Shopping Center. Alex, so how is your drive getting down there? Well, there's still construction along Claremont Drive, but at this intersection, it's done. But residents are still wondering if they're going to come back and repave it or if it's just going to be left like this. Working for you, we reached out to the city for answers. So are they finished, and is this what we're going to have to live with, these bumpy roads? Georgiana Becker avoids driving down Claremont Drive near the Bergener Boulevard intersection because of the uneven road. It's awful. I hardly go there anymore. I'm not doing those um, shops and stores as frequently because it's such a like crazy drive. And Becker isn't the only one who feels this way. The city posted on Facebook two days ago once the work was complete. Some residents commented on the post, one saying, now it's time to replace the street. It's undrivable. Another said this happened months ago and the road is horrible. The new paved sections over the construction are like driving on a roller coaster. This needs to get fixed. Just bahaing off-roading, bobblehead time. Becker even called the drive Bobblehead Road, so we took a bobblehead for a ride to see just how bumpy it is. So why is the street so bumpy? Crews installed pipelines under the street as part of the Pure Water San Diego project. The project aims to provide half of the city's water locally by 2035 by running wastewater through the pipes to facilities. On Claremont Drive, it doesn't look like they're coming back. It's like, it looks like they're finished and they're done and that's it. So the work is done near that intersection, but will the road be repaved? Working for you, we reached out to the city. They told us, quote, the pavement currently in place is temporary. As part of this project, the road will be repaved curb to curb and restriped. The project is scheduled to be completed in 2025. The city says there's no specific start date for when the repavement will happen, but they said that community members will be notified as soon as it's scheduled. Carlo and Kirsten. Uh, so, Alex, you had that bobblehead there. Uh, it showed like it was rattling pretty good there, Manny did. How was the drive overall? Yes, we took Manny Machado for the drive. We understand why people say it is bobblehead road. Also, shout out to Brian, who's producing the show, for lending us his bobblehead. It was perfect. It was a good way to illustrate how rough it is out there. Alex Lai reporting for us. Thanks, Alex. And remember, if there's something that you would like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. Well, Chula Vista is expanding its community shuttle ride share program. This will impact people living in the city's northwest neighborhoods. The shuttle first launched in 2022 and provided free services for people 55 years old and over. Now, riders between 18 and 54 years old can use the shuttle. It costs $2 per ride. Kids can ride with adults. You can request door-to-door -door, door service through the Circuit app. And a new study says rent is dropping in parts of San Diego County. We'll explain. Still ahead. Uh, plus, we also break down what you need to know about new changes hitting the real estate market this week. And some San Diego students celebrate a new baseball field with some all-star support. Lots of sunshine in the forecast. Yeah, we had that going strong for today. Also near seasonal temperatures that will continue all the way into the weekend. Influx of monsoonal moisture by next week and also a strong ridge bringing in the heat. All those details are coming up.